Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have a single cask from the Whistler, just for the nether, uh, from the online whiskey platform in the Netherlands called Drank to Zine. And this is the Mazala cask finish. Ooh. So, whiskey base number 199098. It is a single cask. Um, cast number 1173 and uh, there's 276 bottles excuse me there were they're all sold out 65 euros basically is what we paid for this and this is um, almost nine years in ex bourbon probably coolie and then 10 months of a finish in mazala cask finish interesting so mazala and i are not the best of friends so sorry to mention that. I don't think there's been ever a whiskey where I went, wow, I love it, where there's been a Mazala cask involved. Mazala is a very dry, strong um, red wine from Italy. And yeah, sometimes it's a little bit too much. So what am I going to compare it to? Of course, I still have my nice little, this is the fourth video in the series here. Get rid of this if I may. Um, this is the natural cask, seven-year-old Whistler. This is 59%. Here we have 58.25. So, um, nothing else I can talk about here. I can just talk about it sold out. It was 65 euros. And it matured for nine years in the ex-bourbon cask before it received 10 months of a finish in the ex-mazala fetan. I did cast, sorry, I don't know if it was actually a Euro European oak um, or a American oak. I don't know. 56.25. So, ooh, 56.25. Whiskey Base has made a mistake. They said it's 58. It's 56.25. says so on the bottle. 50. No, it says 58 here. Let's see what it says on the on the side here. It says 58 as well. So um, the mistake is actually on the website from Drang to Zin. <laughs> the Mazala cask um, has 58, not 56, as they say. Wow. But down below in the table, they have a correct just in the description. They have it wrong. Ugh, we can live with that. All right, I love this one. I'm not really sure if I like that one. I am going to do a blind tasting. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it back to back with my German video where I take all five of these whiskeys and I'm going to rank them blind and then reveal them. I hope this wins. Um, I think the five-year-old um, Oloroso will be then um, in the fourth place. This is probably going to be third, and then first and um, second place are going to be between the Grand Cru red wine and the Moscatel from Portugal. I think the Moscatel should win, and the Grand Cru should be second. I really like both of those. Um, let's talk about this. Now, the Grand Cru and the Moscatel is for me as if you took a feather, and you started very, very lightly maybe doing some type of artistry on our walls, yeah? Um, now, this actually takes this big old brush, like a paintbrush, and it slops on that mazala cask finish and really just almost, personal opinion, almost overdoes it. There's a lot more of that red currants, there's a lot more of that ras blackberries, not raspberry, blackberries in here. There's a lot more of that tannin, that oak moment going on here. Um, even from the, from the color here, it's actually a a hue darker than this and this was dark enough and the alcohol pops a little bit more it is 58.25 here we have 59 the 59 is um, actually more it's younger and a little bit better integrated this has a little bit more of an edge to it all right let's try this um, actually at the cast strength 58.25 percent this is the best the more water you put in it the more tannins appear more of a dryness on the side of my mouth actually happens mm, mm. now what's interesting enough is this bottle sold out first 
this actually seems to be exactly the um, the flavor profile many many people are looking for for a good finished whiskey. Um, I have a fairly large group of people that actually watch my reviews and if Jason doesn't like it they will tr actually try to get a sample to try it instead. If I love it that's actually one of their main um, signals to stay away from it. So there's a, a large portion of the whiskey community in Germany that actually is contrary to what I like. I can live with that. Um, I'm contrary. Um, this is not something I like. Um, the aftertaste, that really strong red wine um, is there, that mixture of red currant and blackberry and the tannin are really really evident just a little bit too much in my opinion this is going to be a c to c minus whiskey value for money c minus in my opinion would i be willing to buy another bottle of this no i'm not is this bottle sold out yes it is is there probably a reason for that yep you can bet your money this is exactly what a lot of people like there's even like a dark chocolate going on here Mm. No. Nope. Yeah, oh, no. Nope. It bites a little bit at the end. Uh, there's a little bit of a harshness going on there for me with the water. That mazale moment, um, I must thank a friend of mine. He actually works at Kirsch Import now. His name is um, Andre Haberecht. And he gave me a bottle of mazale. I said, hey, Jason, here. He actually spent the night once at our place. We had a great time together. And, um, I said, thank you very much. I opened the bottle and I was like, whoa, this stuff is way too strong for me. It's way too intense. Even with water, I was like, oh. Um, not my favorite bottle of, um, of wine, Mazala. I don't know if you tried it before, but that stuff is intensive, in my opinion. I do like a good dry red wine, a Bordeaux, a Cabernet Sauvignon, and so on. Absolute my thing. Mazala is taking a little bit to the extreme. And this does it too, as I said. It's not the feather touching the canvas here. It's actually someone using a big, big paddle brush to just paint very broad strokes with it. And I don't like this color. That's my problem. All right, so my question of the day. Oh, I get to drink a little bit of this before I go. Mm. In all four videos, I hope I said at least once, mm, when I drank this whiskey. It's even still good on the aftertaste. I like this. Um, my question of the day is what whiskeys can you actually recommend that have a mazala cast finish or a full maturation? I don't know anyone. And not a single one with full maturation. I do know a couple finishes. Now, before we come to the end of the video, there will be a blind flight where I have all five of these, the four from the Whistler and this, in glasses. I'll be trying them and seeing how much of a fool I can make because... Blind tasting is just so humiliating, isn't it? But it's so important. Can I actually pick out the Mazala? Can I pick out the seven-year-old um, Oloroso? Can I pick out the five-year-old um, Oloroso full maturation? Can I differentiate between a Moscatel um, from Portugal and a, a Grand Cru from France? Red wine. Probably not. <laughs> I'll probably get those confused, but let's see if I can get three from five right here. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay, I finally set it up. Um, we have yellow, we have our green, we have our silver, we have our red, and we have our blue. So someplace we have a Grand Cru, someplace we have Mazala, someplace we have a Moscatel, someplace we have seven-year-old natural cast strength, somewhere we have the Oloroso Sherry Butt. Mm. So first of all, I'm just going to smell them and just rank them and try to guess what they are. Then I'm going to taste them, see if I can get confused and see if I can do this. It's so humbling to do this. And at the end, I will reveal and see how terrible or how well I've done. Let's start off with the, with the yellow. I like the yellow. Not bad. The green. I like the green less. The silver. The silver I like, but I think I like the yellow better. Okay. 
the red. Ooh, I do not like the red. Ah, that's going to be the five-year-old Oloroso cast. I don't know what went wrong there, but something went wrong. And the blue. Oh, I know the blue. That's my favorite. That's my... That, the blue is going to be the home territory, the seven-year-old natural. So I can basically pick out the, the ugly duckling, the red one. I can pick out on the nose the good one. These are a little bit more tricky. Where is the red wine cask? Where is the um, Portuguese muscatel or muscat? Where is the mazala? Actually, I should be able to pick out the mazala very quickly. On the red wine, the red berries. But I really, really can't. It might just be my incompetence. It might just be the ability for whiskeys to adapt to a blind tasting scenario. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like this. The 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 blue love the red I hate, and the yellow is a little bit before the silver and the green. All right, so um, I guess I have to taste it. Mm. Red, if I look at my list, it is the five-year-old Oloroso. Yucky. So let's put the bottle in front of the glass and just keep it like that. The, the winner. Hmm. By seven year old natural castrate. If you can find it, go out and buy it. All right. Now it's really down to um, what's going on here. Can I figure out what these three are? Use a little bit of water. All right. Let's start off the back with the green one. There is a little bit of a red berry moment going on here. But it's well integrated. It's a little bit stronger than I would like. Is that my mazala? Hmm. A little bit of that oakiness also in the tongue. The next one, the silver. Mm -hmm. Now, silver has more heat. It has a mo little bit more of that um, elderberry moment flower going on here. A little bit more of a springtime type of aroma. It's sweeter, but it's a lot more power. I like the um, green better than I do the silver, at least in my blind tasting. And now the joker, the yellow here. What's going on with the yellow? The yellow has some definite nice wine moments going on there as well. But the overall complexity of this whiskey leads it to be in the second place. So yellow, green, silver. Now on a different day, different temperature, different mood, different setting, different comparison whiskeys, these might actually be switched up. These are all very much in my liking, in my wheelhouse. Now, I do know that this video was about the Mazala. I gave it a 3 to 3 minus. I'm sorry, C to C minus. Um, and yet, every time I do a um, blind tasting with Mazala whiskeys, they actually rank much higher than I do um, what I just... Um, do a video all by themselves, so I think I have a certain prejudice against Mazala Finnish whiskeys. So let's go and find out what the silver one is. The silver one is the Muscatel. So where's the Muscatel bottle here? 
Um, this is not the Muscatel. So I should know the colors by now, but I don't. Um, yep. <laughs> Three bottles left. And it's interesting. I did this with my German video, and I had exactly the same result. I like this the best of the three all by itself, but when I compare them with each other, there's more heat here. And I think I like the best when I added water to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to this and see if it changes my opinion. Mm. Knowing what it is and adding that little bit of water, bringing it down, this is 59.3%. Bring it down to about 55%. It makes this a good whiskey, but 59.3% bringing in the heat a little bit too much for me. All right, pla um, position uh, bronze, uh, the green one. The green one is going to be my Grand Cru Wein. Exactly the same ranking I gave in my um, German video, by the way. And um, so now the Grand Cru Wein did not surprise me. I, I expected exactly where it is. But the thing that really, really, really surprised me is how well the Mazala casks do in the blind challenge. I apparently have definitely a prejudice against Mazala. But every single... I've done this like three times so far that I've had blind whiskey, I've had four or five whiskeys. Uh, the Mazala cask in the video actually lost. And then I do blind tasting and it's in position one or two. Now, this is better, but this won. And the really, really weird thing is this is exactly the same results I had with my German video. Yep, I do get a little bit more of that Mazala, but I like it. And this is the one that sold out. This one is not sold out. This definitely is not sold out. This is sold out. So apparently when I taste the, the, the whiskeys and don't know what's in it, Fifty-eight point two five, fifty-nine point five, fifty-nine point three, and uh, the sixty point five five. Um, yeah, what can we say? The prejudice, Jason. Now, what we can take basically many, many different results here. Um, the first result is. This is not a whiskey you the world needs. This is a whiskey which I'm going to miss. These are polar opposites, it's my opinion. These, by the way, are very, very dependent on my mood, on what I'm drinking, on with, with it, um, what the temperature is, what the day, the time of the day is, and so on. Um, blind, I like the Mazada the best. The, um, the Cru um, in the middle and the uh, Moscatel at the end. In my videos, I actually rated this higher than this. This was a um, C plus B minus. This was a C to C minus. And yet, blind, they're totally different. They're actually switch flip-flop. This remains exactly where it is. I must be prejudiced against the Mazala. Or, the other thing we can take as a takeaway, what we can take as a result is... Jason understands what's what is bad and what is good, but Jason does not understand what's in the middle. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for watching me make a fool of myself doing my blind tasting as usual. All the best. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.